I spent more than 20 hours following AI stories this week, and this is what you need to know. We're going to go into strategic principles first. We're going to get to those stories second, and then I'm going to give you takeaways third. So strategic principles that came out this week, platform consolidation thesis is intact. The major AI labs, Anthropic, OpenAI, Microsoft, Google, are racing to own the complete agent layer directly. Middleware and thin wrapper companies face commoditization risk as platforms are embedding agent capabilities natively. Second, simplicity continues to beat infrastructure. Most effective AI workflows avoid elaborate scaffolding. Natural language iteration outperforms complicated prompt engineering and RAG systems. You can get to minimal overhead approaches that take you really, really far. Third, vertical integration is a wave. Companies are controlling full compute stacks and continuing to invest aggressively in supply sovereignty. Custom silicon is becoming the way to go with AI. Fourth, discovery versus search is a big paradigm shift, and we're seeing beat after beat after beat on that week over week. Commerce and workflows are moving from explicit search queries into conversational intent discovery, massive implications for marketers. Finally, AI is a scientific discovery engine. We're transitioning from data hypothesis and analysis hypotheticals to cancer models that demonstrate novel, externally and experimentally validated scientific insights. Let's get into the stories that delivered those beats. Story number one, Anthropic launched Claude Skills. It's a reusable agent customization platform that packages instructions, scripts, resources together. I did a whole video on it. I think it's one of the biggest releases of the year. It takes the combination of manual orchestration and context and prompts out of the equation so that you can auto compose what you need to do by assembling the context on the fly. Simon Willison, who I read often and really respect, called this a bigger deal than the model context protocol server, which we all know is all over the ecosystem. I agree. I think it's a huge release. Watch for how enterprises handle permissions with this. Watch for OpenAI's and Google's competitive response. There will be one. Watch for whether skills become a standard abstraction for agentic workflows. My bet is yes. Story number two, Google Cancer AI Breakthrough. Two models demonstrated computational scientific discovery this week. Deep Somatic demonstrated comp competency in analyzing cancer sequences and works across all major DNA sequencing platforms and is specifically good at analyzing mutations in cancers. Cell to Sentence is a 27 billion scale parameter cell model that is designed to generate novel drug hypotheses and select successfully generated a specific drug hypothesis validated in vivo or in, in a little Petri dish to show that it could turn cold tumors hot or make them visible to the immune system. Look, I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to comment on the scientific impact of each particular hypothesis here. What I am going to say is that we live in a world where AI has gone from does it have hypothesis capabilities to two models in 48 hours with two novel scientific breakthroughs that are validated externally. We are speeding up. And that is the big takeaway I have on the science side. This is going to get faster and faster and faster from here on out. We are going to see a speed up in drug pipelines. It is not about this particular drug. It is not about this particular discovery. It is about the wave of AI innovation pushing into medical and drug discovery pipelines. It's a big deal. Story number three, OpenAI and Broadcom. OpenAI signed a multi-year collaboration for 10 gigawatts of custom AI accelerators. This is OpenAI saying that they cannot just depend on NVIDIA, that they are buying as much NVIDIA chips as they can get and they still don't have enough, that they are going to have to buy more. They're going to go to Broadcom because that's the only way they can get compute demand met. This is not a story about I don't want NVIDIA. It's a story about demand for OpenAI scaling so fast that they need to go to every chip supplier on the planet. And that's why we talk about custom silicone. Story number four, Walmart and OpenAI. ChatGPT's instant checkout is going to enable full transactional shopping within the chat interface, and Walmart is on board with one tap checkout via Stripe. This means that you can say something like meal ideas for a family of four in ChatGPT, and you'll get Walmart meal delivery options, specific ingredients, and be able to buy from Walmart in ChatGPT. This is going to be a situation that marketers will watch very closely as we head into the holiday quarter. They're going to watch conversion rates versus Walmart. They're going to look at how we handle retailer exclusivity policies. What is Amazon's response? How do you handle privacy concerns? 
How do you measure intent? What are the key behavioral metrics? These, this is new territory for marketers. We have an entire brand new channel that 10% of the world's population uses, and it is getting unlocked for commerce now. Story number five, Microsoft Windows 11 agentic operating system. Microsoft just keeps shipping on agent and copilot. In this case, they're shipping, hey, copilot, always on activation. They're shipping what they call extended context, which got a lot of pushback because it also was read as a privacy violation. Because in a sense, what they're doing is they're saying, Microsoft Copilot can see your whole workstation all the time and remember everything. And employees have felt like that was a violation of their privacy. That debate is going to go on. I expect Microsoft is going to win that because enterprises have an interest in using agents to drive hardware productivity and software productivity on laptops. And they will push employees, whether we like it or not, frankly, to go for it. Now, Obviously, some folks with leverage are going to walk away and they're going to go to places that don't insist on the Microsoft ecosystem. We can have the conversation about Copilot and why Copilot hasn't felt like a cutting edge LLM in a long time. But the reality is Microsoft has customers at the enterprise level whom it wants to cut cloud deals with and everything pivots around that. The Windows deals, the Teams deals, all of the productivity deals pivot around cloud. That is the money maker for the company and they think in terms of the money makers, the buyers, the enterprise customers. So that's story number five. Story number six, NVIDIA DGX Spark. It is a data center class AI development desktop positioned at just under 4,000. I mean, I can get into the specs. 144 ARM Grace CPU cores. It runs 100 tokens a second for 7 billion parameter models. And it is essentially a data center AI at a consumer price point. So if you ever wanted to run a data center grade LLM, you could do so from your desktop. And so this is going to democratize the availability of privacy preserving local inference, developers who wanna do edge deployment testing. It's going to give us a whole new compute category once it's established. It's not really a laptop, it's not a desktop, it is a local LLM compute point. I'm really curious to see where this goes next year because this could open up a whole new sort of place on the desk for compute for people who want local LLMs. And we are going to have to see the software catch up because right now this is for developers. Story number seven, Andre Karpathy's Nano Chat. He built a $100 do-it-yourself chat GPT pipeline that's trainable in four hours. The point here is not this particular model. The point is that Carpathy is a brilliant innovator. He's a phenomenal educator, ex-OpenAI, ex-Tesla. And what he is interested in is showing transparency around how models are trained. And so this becomes a phenomenal way for students to get exposure to AI training, to understand how AI models are built. It's something that should be in university curriculums. It's something that if you want to learn how to make models from scratch or build models, it it becomes a way to start to get into emerging techniques with models very, very easily. I hope this is adopted by people interested in helping others learn how AI models work. But my fear is because it is command line, because it requires technical knowledge, we are going to see this once again limited to the developer community. Okay. Last but not least, I want to talk about my favorite read of the week. It's Just Talk to It by Peter Steinberger. Why should you read it? You should read it because Steinberger has a compelling case against agentic vendors. There's a lot of agent vendors out there that are selling a lot of very fancy infrastructure. And Steinberger is arguing, based on his own experience building with agents, that you don't need as much infrastructure as you think you do, and you should be leaning into iterative building with agents, and that you should think of agent use as mirroring people management. So you should use scope judgment when you talk to them. You should think about when you time interventions. You could think about how you do course correction with people. Same with agents. Now, my one critique of this article is that I think that is an excellent take from an engineering perspective if you are looking at individual productivity and managing agents. I have more questions if you're talking about a larger agentic framework that needs to do big back office operations. Those tend to need more frameworks. And so I think I read this as a refreshing take from a very senior engineering figure on how he builds with agents. Absolutely worth a read. I think there are takeaways for how we all talk to our LLMs, even if you're not an engineer. So dig into it. And of course, if you want to see how all of this customizes for you, 
I've got a prompt for that. We have the, the week's custom prompt to help you dig into the news and, of course, into uh, Peter's article as well. Cheers. <laughs>